Welcome to our service of morning prayer this morning. I hope you're managing to uh, keep cool in this weather. Um, but let's pray together um, and thank God for this new day. Today, the church commemorates Bridget of Sweden, abbess of Vadstena. Uh, Bridget's father was governor of Upland when she was born in about the year 1303. She married at the age of 14, had eight children and often attended the royal court where she continued to experience the mystical revelations that she had known since childhood. These increased in intensity after her husband's death and three years later, she responded by founding a monastery for nuns and monks at Vadstena in 1346. Bridget's daughter, Catherine, was the first abbess of the so-called Bridgetine order, which became very influential in Northern Europe. After travelling to Rome to obtain the Pope's approval for her plans, Bridget never returned to Sweden, but spent the rest of her life as a pilgrim, an advisor to rulers and church leaders, and a minister to all in need. Her revelations were recorded by her confessors before her death, which occurred on this day in 1373. So, as ever, uh, words to join in with will appear on the screen as we come together to pray this morning. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. May Christ the day star dawn in our hearts and triumph over the shades of night. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. The Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 19. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its song to another, and one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language, and their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words to the end of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber, and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens and runs to the very end again, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures for ever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, and in keeping them there is a great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, rise in our hearts this day. Enfold us in the brightness of your love 
and bear us at the last to heaven's horizon for your love's sake. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 20, starting at verse 21. But the children rebelled against me. They did not follow my statutes and were not careful to observe my ordinances, by whose observance everyone shall live. They profaned my Sabbaths. Then I thought I would pour out my wrath upon them and send my anger against them in the wilderness. But I withheld my hand and acted for the sake of my name so that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations, in whose sight I had brought them out. Moreover, I swore to them in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the nations and disperse them through the countries, because they had not executed my ordinances, but had rejected my statutes and profaned my Sabbaths, and their eyes were set on their ancestors' idols. Moreover, I gave them statutes that were not good and ordinances by which they could not live, I defiled them through their very gifts in their offering up all their firstborn in order that I might horrify them so that they might not know that I am the Lord. Therefore, mortal, speak to the house of Israel and say to them, thus says the Lord God, in this again your ancestors blasphemed me by dealing treacherously with me. For when I had brought them into the land that I swore to give them, then wherever they saw any high hill or any leafy tree, There they offered their sacrifices and presented the provocation of their offering. There they sent up their pleasing odours, and there they poured out their drink offerings. I said to them, What is the high place to which you go? So it is called Bama to this day. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Will you defile yourselves after the manner of your ancestors and go astray after these detestable things? When you offer your gifts and make your children pass through the fire, you defile yourselves with all your idols to this day. And shall I be consulted by you, O house of Israel? As I live, says the Lord God, I will not be consulted by you. What is in your mind shall never happen. The thought, let us be like the nations, like the tribes of the countries and worship wood and stone. As I live, says the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, And with wrath poured out, I will be king over you. I will bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you are scattered with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with wrath poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the peoples and there I will enter into judgment with you face to face. As I entered into judgment with your ancestors in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so I will enter into judgment with you, says the Lord God. I will make you pass under the staff and will bring you within the bond of the covenant. I will purge out the rebels among you and those who transgress against me. I will bring them out of the land where they reside as aliens, but they shall not enter the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the book of James, chapter 1, starting at the first verse. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Let the believer, who is lowly, boast in being raised up, and the rich in being brought low because the rich will disappear like a flower in the field. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the field, its flower falls and its beauty perishes. It is the same way with the rich. In the midst of a busy life, they will wither away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so a short reflection by Andrew Davison 
on our James reading. The book of Esther in the Old Testament tells the story of God's deliverance of the Hebrews through the labours of the Jewish Queen of Persia. Famously, though, the book does not mention God at all. There is something a little similar about the letter of James. It distills much of what lies at the heart of a Christian approach to life, and yet it hardly mentions Christ at all, beyond setting out the credentials of the author at the beginning and a brief mention in passing in chapter two. That need not trouble us. No reader or writer of the texts of the early church would have expected any particular document to do all the work that could be done, and neither should we. Some texts are biographical, some doctrinal, and some about how to live. Some do several things, but with an emphasis more on one than the other. The letter of James may not mention Jesus a great deal or recount his life, but it brings together much that he taught and exemplified and provides some invaluable commentary upon it. As a letter, the way it goes about things might remind us of a saying from Matthew's Gospel. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only one who does the will of my Father in heaven. And so we come to the words of the Benedictus together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so let us pray together. For the peace that comes from God alone, for the unity of all peoples and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Church of Christ, for Stephen and Gavin, our bishops, and for the whole people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all of the nations of the world. For Elizabeth, our Queen, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this community here, for our villages, and for our benefits, for our neighbours and our friends, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and suffering, and for all in any need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the dying and for those who mourn them, for the faithful whom we entrust unto the Lord in hope, as we look forward to the day when we share the fullness of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, have a lovely weekend and I will see you next week. God bless.